that was fun. Slowly but surely, Barcelona are getting back to their best. Frankie de Jong is coming back from injury. The same with Ansu Fati. Rafinha had a masterclass of performance. And Amin Yamal being the best 17-year-old I have seen since Neymar at Santos, perhaps. This team, it's cooking. It, it really is cooking. Barcelona beat Young Boys 5-0 at home in a game that was more important than it actually seemed to begin with. Young Boys is probably the worst side Barcelona has faced this season, but nevertheless, the three points in this game were crucial because after losing to Monaco in the way that we all know Barcelona did, having the ability to win and have had a statement victory is potentially the most important thing Barcelona needed to accomplish this season so far because they needed to get the three points. They needed to stamp their foot basically in, in the new UCL format and say, hey, we are here to compete for those top eight spots and we are here to compete for the trophy as well by the end of the season. And that's exactly what I think Hansi Flick's team accomplished during this game. The best thing for Barcelona was that they finished off the game early. You know, it was 3-0 already in the first half, so Hansi Flick could have now the liberty to rotate as he wished. And he already gave debut to, for instance, Cuenca, our young 17-year-old center back, by the end of the game. That is something that you are allowed if you have such a big margin. Frank de Jong coming back and playing a pretty good handful of minutes is also very good news, as well as having someone like Lamin Yamal rest and have then somebody else like Ansu Fati who needed those minutes of game time to get back into match sharpness. All of those things are capable of being of happening if you have the ability to just simply become and relax and not worry too much about the scoreline at the end of the day. And since Barcelona blew young boys out of the water in the very first half, they were allowed to do that. But well, now let's reel it in and let's talk about how Barcelona line up for this game. So on screen right now, you can see the starting 11 for both teams. For Barcelona, it goes as follows. They started with Iñaki Peña, the goalkeeper, Jules Kunde on the right back, Pauco Garcia and Inigo Martinez as the two main center backs, Alejandro Valle through the left, Pedri Marcasado, who's having a tremendous start to the season, by the way, Lamin Jamal, Rafinha, Ferran Torres, and Robert Lewandowski. Even though Robert Lewandowski got two goals, I have to agree with SofaScore here, the website, saying that Rafinha was definitely the man of the match. For me, he was incredible. I'll touch on him just a little bit later. It's surprising, honestly, to see young boys who are supposed to be a very prestigious club in Switzerland playing so badly because I remember the last time that we played against them, it was also a big result, but I remember they put much more of a competition. They're standing right now 11th in the league table of the Swiss League, and that is actually the relegation zone because there's only 12 teams in Switzerland. So they're having a very bad season so far, young boys. And Barcelona clearly took advantage of that. Barcelona started the game in the best way possible by scoring a goal in the eighth minute, which made basically just the whole of young boys teams put down tools. And let's start talking about how big Lewandowski is looking this season. He looks like the clinical finisher that we all know and love, and I'm pretty sure that his numbers are going to be upwards of 20 goals this season. How many goals do you think that Lewandowski will score in this campaign? I want to know from every single one of you watching this video, how many goals do you think Lewandowski will get? And by the way, once you're down there, remember to subscribe to the channel. It always helps us out. I'm coming back to YouTube after a very long break, so I always want to see your support there, and I appreciate it very, very much. But anyhow, the second goal is where I have my first commentary for you guys. Let's check it out together here on Twitter. And I want you to look at the touch from Pedri for this goal. Just look at it. Ooh. And then the goal from Rafinha. So the goal, the finish, might not have been the most incredible thing ever. But when we are mentioning and talking about Pedri, the day that Andres Iniesta is announcing his retirement from football, number eight shirt currently for Barcelona is this kid, Pedri. And the first touch to, that he uses to position himself directly towards goal is superb. The, the quality of this guy is incredible. He can be easily the best midfielder in the world only if injuries respect him a bit much, a, a bit better, you know, a, a little bit more. I think that he, if he finds that consistency and that's, that rhythm, we in Barcelona are getting potentially, talent-wise, definitely the best midfielder out there. The third goal came from, now this time, an assist from Pedri, and it was a goal for Inigo Martinez. Let me see if I can find the goal for you guys, but in the meantime, let's, you know, give Inigo Martinez the deserve he respects, because we're talking about a guy who came into Barcelona. I was very critical of him, particularly because I wasn't 
a big fan and I didn't thought that his the move was going to be very beneficial for Barcelona, but I was wrong. I was really wrong about Inigo Martinez because you see in this game how he is already the marshal of that defense. He's definitely the best defender Barcelona has had this season alongside Kunde. I think as the two center backs, he's the one imposing and he's definitely the one commanding that back line. And consistently this season, he has been outstanding. He's matching the speed athletically. He's looking very strong, very good. With the, with the ball at his feet, he's also very good circulating the ball. In this game, we saw plenty of passes of shifting perspective from the left-hand side all the way to Lamin Yamal. Those key lob crosses that he does are very good. And I just feel overall that Inigo Martinez is giving Barcelona a consistency in the defense that we have been lacking since when we had, you know, that back line that was Valde, Araujo, Christensen, and Kunde. It's been a while since we had them all fit on the pitch playing at the same time. And Inigo Martinez sort of is now making their way into, into that, right? So let's see if when every single center back is fit, what's going to be the, the partnership. I also want to know, guys, what do you think should be the, the main center back partnership? Because I believe that Inigo Martinez, with the form that he's showing at the moment, he definitely deserves to continue being a starter for Barcelona. So here I promise and we deliver. This is a goal for Inigo Martinez. Just look at it. Cross from Pedri, and what a header from Inigo Martinez. Overall, like I was saying, that goal demonstrates for me just simply what is so far an incredible start to the to the campaign with for Inigo Martinez. So very deserved goal because he deserved that sort of recognition, definitely. He's been trying. He's been plenty of corners and set pieces where Inigo Martinez has gotten his head to the end of it. And after, what, like nine matches already this season, he gets his goal. So I'm happy for him because he definitely deserves some sort of recognition. And that goal, it's exactly that. That's the reward of some very hard work. And you know what? That isn't only the good thing that Inigo Martinez did in this game. He also got an assist. <laughs> he also got an assist. Dude. Let, let's look at it. Look. He also got an assist. Look at that. The ball, the, the ball from Rafinha. Inigo Martinez heads it. And Lewandowski then scores. I mean, not only is this team now having many creative players, no matter who they are, but come on, dude, don't we look even better from set pieces? We scored two goals from set pieces in this game, and before we haven't scored for, for a while. And, and I think these sort of, you know, improvements here and there we see with other teams around Europe, like Arsenal. I think Arsenal are the best team in the world when it comes to set pieces. And you have someone like Gabriel, Gabriel Magallanes, who scored important goals, like against Manchester City, and like against um, Tottenham in the in the North London Derby, and recently they got another goal against Leicester City to come back in the game from another set piece. So definitely, I think you need those improvements in some constants, which are you know, let's say a little bit different to to what you normally play. You know, Barcelona can find themselves in different situations. Let's say in in a game like this where it's maybe too tight, uh, or or in a semi final of the Champions League, and if you have that ability to to break yourself up from the usual tactics and score a goal from a set piece, that definitely makes you uh, a very dangerous team, right? That's something that Real Madrid, for instance, have it locked up in their arsenal. They have so many different ways to score. And if Barcelona can get that versatility to attack from different ways and just be a, a threat no matter what they do, I think this team is just really, really could be unbeatable. But 5-0, guys. 5-0 demonstrates, for me, the best margin on Ronnie for Barcelona. And if Barcelona can start to dismantle teams like that very easy, very quickly throughout the games. I believe that in the Champions League, that goal difference margin will definitely come in handy. I'll try to see if I can make a, a video predicting every single match and just see where would Barcelona finish in contrast to other teams. Because this year, the format of the Champions League makes it so every single goal matters. No matter if you win a game 2-1, you need to continue scoring goals. If you if you can score four goals in a game, you need to do it because the margins are very, very small. And definitely, as many goals as you can score, the better. And I think that Barcelona, this team that are just simply very vertical, they give a vertigo to their game that is incredible with Hansi Flick. The more goals they can score, the better it will be. We have to talk quickly as well about, we saw, well, our new goalkeeper, Chesney, in the stands. It's good, it's good to see. The rumors is that he will have a training sessions throughout this international break, so he'll be able to play the game against Sevilla. I'm not too sure. We have to wait and see. There were still some instances during this game where I thought, for instance, Iñaki Peña would be good, and I would sort of vouch for him to continue as a starting player. But realistically, 
there there are still some moments where for instance the ball is let loose and it's you know for anybody to get there and Iñaki Peña makes runs outside the area trying to clear the ball and he doesn't look confident he doesn't take the best decisions and for me that in contrast to an experienced goalkeeper like Chesney you cannot simply pass up on that opportunity so for me the Polish player needs to start 100% when he gets up to full, full fitness Last but not least, I was going to mention Rafinha. I think that Rafinha for me right now for Barcelona is the most crucial player no matter what. Rafinha is on another level. He's having so many goal contributions. Yet again here, a goal. If I'm not wrong, he also got an assist during this game. Yeah, a goal and an assist for Rafinha. 90 minutes wearing the armband. That's just simply talking levels about a guy, right? And... For me, now that we've given Rafinha this captain's arm, armband, he looks even better. He's taking more responsibility. He feels like the, the player that we wanted to sign from Leeds United. He's actually now having his best start to the season in terms of numbers. He's overall, just for me, an, an outstanding player, an incredible role model. I don't know whether... <laughs> I really don't know whether Barcelona should promote him to first captain now that Ter Stegen is injured, definitely he should continue being that guy because I believe that that's just such a positive news for Barcelona. And it's interesting because, for instance, Franke de Jong entered the field in the second half and Rafinha kept the armband. So that definitely speaks something. I don't know if there's rules or certain, you know, restrictions that maybe Barcelona needs to sort of respect the hierarchy of the, of the captains, but if Rafinha can stay with the captain's armband, I will keep it with him. I really do, do think that it makes our team better. I like how professional he is and how much he respects and loves the batch of Barcelona. I really do think he's Blaugrana through and through. So now, guys, with this result, how happy are you? How happy are you? I definitely am very happy because of the final victory. Of course, I think a lot of goals, the way that this team is playing, Lamin Jamal is so fun to watch, dude. This kid is outstanding. Like I, like I say, I think he reminds me of like a, like if Neymar and Messi had a kid. He really looks that special. And since he's Blaugrana, once again, through and through, I believe he will stay for a very long time. And, and we've seen it, right? We've heard it. I think he's a, a very... He has his values very strongly rooted into himself. And hopefully he can be able to deliver that on the field like he's doing every week in and week out. I think the conversation is already starting whether Lamin Yamal already only at 17 years of age is the best player right now in the world. I think there's definitely shouts for that and I'm guaranteeing you that if he maintains this for the entirety of the campaign, he will be that by the end of, of this season. He will be that guy. He will be the best player out there. And I'm also very interested to see how Frank de Jong gets back into the fold because with Marc Casado just being as good as a little pit bull in the in the midfield, being as good as he is, I want to see how many ball recoveries he had in this game because he was outstanding, to be honest. He really was good. Look at this. Seven ground duels, seven ground duels won, seven ground duels, and then four won, and then one aerial duel won. That's 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 very good. I, I really like Marc Asado. He's 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 like our own little Kimmich, right? And I think that's what Hansi Flick is doing. Whether will Frankie De Jong be able to dismantle him and take his place out of the team, I'm not too sure. I would like to start a poll maybe or or inquiry on you guys as well. Do you think De Jong should come back in? Definitely for me, De Jong is one of my favorite players. I've always say that. I think he will give a progression to the ball that if this team is very vertical, he will even improve it way, way further. He will even be better for this team. Maybe Hansi Flick could try in the meantime. Rafinha on the left-hand side instead of Ferran Torres, who once again had a very underwhelming game. And Pedri as a number 10, and then maybe Frank de Jong. We also have Dani Olmo potentially returning for that game against Sevilla. And yeah, I think that we're in a very good position, particularly now, because after the international break and after the Sevilla match, Barcelona will face Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. So let's wait and see how we do this, guys. But I'm very excited for those games. So once again, thank you so much for watching. It's great being back on YouTube and nothing. I'll read your comments and answer to as many as I can. See you in the next one. Take care. Ciao, ciao.